Wow, 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 ladies and gentlemen, the Gungans and Droids and Underlord Hot Cartel members, welcome to Waddled Hellnet News, the only news <laughs> you're ever gonna need. Well, it's because you have no other choice. And my gosh, one of the biggest updates in recent Galaxy Heroes history, a new territory battle that's mixed light side and dark side, a new exclusive conquest unit, Reva. Those Inquisitors, if you thought they were paying your butt now, they're gonna still be the thorn in your thigh. Right now, we have a little teaser, Job of the Hut's Kirill, the final requirements for Job of the Hut, which look, Pretty darn good, some new mod changes, quality of life, a new mod feature to perfect your mods, and some phase one gear economy changes. Not too far, well, <laughs> not too far, but still kind of far. In the future, we're gonna kind of semi break down this video here. The video actually has more information than the forum post uh, itself does here, but I wanna highlight a few things at the forum post. And I wanna summarize what this video is talking about here. First thing up, uh, which I'm baffled to see here, uh, we have the final requirements for Job of the Hut here. Bosch Leia, uh, Relic 5, Aura Singh, Relic 6, Fennec Shan, Relic 7. I mean, holy cow, this is great. Boba Fett, Relic 7. I was expecting like a Relic 9 Boba Fett. No, Relic 7, Mob Enforcer, Relic 3, and Mob Enforcer is also getting a rework on top of that which is pretty nuts we're going to talk about that at the end of the video here a lot to talk about in a short amount of time here brand new territory battle rise of the empire here there's gonna be multiple paths there's gonna be a light side path dark side path and a mixed path and jabba hut's gonna be kind of important for territory battles. i think right now the requirements for jabba are looking a little too kind compared to other galactic legends i have a feeling it's not gonna be a pvp oriented galactic legend probably will still be very good but not as good as some others like kenobi yada 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 i think it's gonna be more pve oriented raid territory battle oriented here and we have a uh, our first look that reva is gonna be the upcoming conquest unit so inquisitors are probably gonna give it better which i we've it's been kind of a letdown of a faction but it's gonna become even more important here uh, mod calibration quality of life stuff. And I think actually, well, let's start rolling the video and we'll talk about this in a, a, a second here. Gary, can you get the video up and running here? Yeah, uh, a little feedback for the developers who made the video. Uh, the video's great. I think you should do more of these. Uh, my feedback would be the music way too loud and maybe use maybe use non-copyrighted uh, Star Wars-esque type of music because they blew, they put John Williams on blast. So definitely if you're a YouTuber out there, I don't recommend reacting to this video in its raw format or else John Williams is coming for your paycheck here. Anyways, this is Meathead, uh, one of our community managers, kind of introducing the overall idea of this September 2022 road ahead. Main thing is Jabba the Hutt. We have some animations. It's gonna be very thermal detonator intensive in terms of the kit. Thermal detonators are gonna be pretty powerful. Salacious Crumb is also gonna interact with Jabba by throwing thermal detonators out there. We were told that Salacious Crumb is gonna be added into the game. We didn't know if it was gonna be a standalone character or part of Jabba. It's part of Jabba, but it's not just there just to be there. It's actually gonna be doing something. Rancor Raid, ultimate ability that you can use repeatedly over and over and over again. Our first support Galactic Legend that we have in Galaxy is gonna be Jabba, but it's not quite the, it's not quite the support like C-3PO, Hermit Yoda, although he's not directly attacking. C-3PO, Hermit Yoda, Watsimmer, they're just kind of sitting in the background doing good support stuff, but it's mostly going to be in a capacity of they're, they're just passively assisting. Jabba is going to take a very hands-on approach to the battle. He's letting other people do his dirty work. Now, we don't have the full kit reveal today. I'm assuming that's going to come maybe the next week or so here for the entire Jabba the Hutt kit reveal here. But it, what I am mean, excited about as well, you know, some of the legendaries are a bit lackluster. I, I, I want to feel the jitters, the excitement when I did the Commander Luke Skywalker. There has not been an event in terms of, I mean, Mandalorian actually came really darn close in terms of the actual event, and you didn't need crazy uh, relics, but the old Ben moment from the Commander Luke event still to this day, I remember the goosebumps I had when it was super early in Warren playing that. I'm hoping I can get the same feels here. We got some kind of teasers with the cutscene here. Maybe we can move along. Here we go. Just so you can see Jabba the Hutt in the battle here in a few seconds. Just kind of getting an idea of how his sheer size is gonna be uh, kind of implemented in the game. He's, it's a pretty big fella that we got going on back there. I'm hoping Gamorrean Guard gets a bit more love. Uh, we didn't see any reworks, Omicrons, or anything like that, but here is a, allegedly the ultimate animation, which if so, it's a good looking one because let's just, I think they heard us, Master Kodoi and Lord Vader, their ultimate animations were a downgrade, especially compared to Master Luke and Sith Eternal. So really cool to see some of that in action. And I think this is our little like teaser for what the event's gonna look like. I, you know. You guys get a lot of money out of this game. We want to relive these mini Star Wars moments. So it's great seeing this right here. I mean, this actually doesn't even look like Galaxy of Heroes. This looks like a different game. I, hopefully it actually does look as good as this for a mobile game 
and they actually implement this inside of the actual event but this is uh I'm, I'm i'm genuinely excited for this event the requirements are not that crazy compared to other galactic legends we gotta wait and see but let's move on to the next conversation which is a brand new territory battle the rise of the empire a multi-alignment territory battle and the pitch is here it's gonna include your ships characters you're gonna have the light side uh for like jedi rebels you're gonna have the dark side kind of going through anakin's uh, journey from mustafar moving forward here and then you're gonna have this mixed path in the very middle here and Jabba Hutt's gonna be kind of an important member to this Jabba Hutt's gonna get some, it's their own addition those the Geonosis territories but they're also gonna be important for territory battles for rise of the empire here and then we have that Reva as the exclusive unit kind of like Kiadi Mundi rebel officer Lee Organa um <laughs> I know some people despise the Kenobi show but I'll tell you this just from a balance standpoint the Inquisitors should be a lot better than they are right now and I think Reva is probably gonna be a critical component to making them a bit more competitive because for a legendary style team they don't quite feel all that legendary but we I, I i felt this the moment we saw the kartho nasi territory battle omicron remember it i was like what's the point of this it's uh, the older public teams crossbred between light side dark side you couldn't really get the most out of it and i was like this has to be a teaser for a territory battle and here it is their hope and prayer is to try to get this out by the end of the year so i wouldn't expect it october i'm expecting a december release cycle for this and i guess the other thing they're trying to pitch for this event is that they're trying to i mean it sounded like they're trying to make this like a conquest or conquest you can easily update it over time so as things change or for example let's say new tv shows come to star wars and they can update the territory battle experience and i i'm happy to hear this because when territory battles first came out we were kind of told that they were going to be kind of a frequent thing because let's be honest it's I'm excited because it's nice having something fun to play. It's not a completely new and unique experience because it's, it's just a reskin for the most part and some stat changing and putting some different awards. So it's not, I don't think, a, a high amount of effort like maybe raids are. Raids kind of have, are a bit more unique from one another here. But I'm hoping that we do see a bit more territory battles updated because right now it just feels like, you know, all we have is conquest and just the natural evolution of Grand Arena and Territory War, War Meta. So for people that have been waiting for PvE stuff, this is going to be your opportunity to really kind of get into the weeds and i think this is going to be a territory that's let me put let me just remind you guys i'm excited for this i'm just telling you right now when territories first come out i'm sure people are going to complain and moan how difficult it is just like the gotbs i expect it to be very difficult at the get-go and then over time it should become a little bit more easily beatable so just putting that out there uh next important thing this is um interesting so we know there we know there's a mod update coming to star wars galaxy of heroes quality of life stuff there's gonna be ease of accessibility removing Fortnite mods this is stuff we kind of heard in interviews in the past they're introducing a new feature called calibration let me actually back up for a second besides all this calibration stuff, there's huge quality of life stuff where it's gonna be easier to mass level mass slice mass delete kind of important things and being able to filter what you want to find what you don't want to find uh, but this is what I think is the most interesting. There's this new caliber feature which is going to require a brand new calibration mod. They're going to show us in a bit this new currency. And um, from the way I understand it, what it's going to do is you can basically, you're, you're trying to perfect your six dot mods. Let's say you got some really bad rolls and you want to get maybe, let's say you got a mod of no speed on it. Well, with the calibrate, you can basically trade off a secondary stat that you have and this is the problem it's going to randomly apply one of the other available secondary stats so you might not still get speed but let's say i think they show an example here i think they uh i think they pulled out offense here we're going to see a quick example they're going to calibrate the offense let's say you don't want offense which, you know, offense isn't the bad one and then they get protection as a result here uh and now this is, so you kind of you make some trade-offs here so i think this is going to be helpful if you need to get mods that need more speed on them or kind of save mods that don't have to be. so the way they put it is the perfecter really great mods and then make okay mods great mods and this is the new material these micro attenuators so um there's always a catch as i told you I, I, you know listen this isn't rocket surgery as i always like to joke when we heard there was mod quality of life stuff, i'm like all right what's the catch what's the catch they don't just do quality of life stuff for free there's always a catch and the catch is re-rolling with these calibrate mods and the upside is you can try to perfect those mods that maybe seem like they lost the cause and you can't calibrate until you get up the six dot as well so that's something kind of important to put on your radar here so i think this is a good step in the right direction to kind of redeem mods because the problem with mods is once you kind of slice a mod if you didn't get the right amount of speed speed's just way too important in galaxy of heroes so these mod attenuators are going to help you 
get as much speed as possible. So I know they, they talk about other stats, but it's really speed. How much more speed can you push out? And my ultimate speculation is that they're having us play around these six the mods because they're also making some farming changes to six that mods. My ultimate speculation is that there's seven dot mods somewhere in the horizon. But right now they want to kind of milk as much as possible out of the six dot modding process here. And then we also have economy changes, both for mods as well as gear on top of it. Uh, I, I just want to pause and we'll get back to the video. I thought this was kind of funny. So they, they admitted we're still wrapping up phase one of the gear changes. There's two things happening soon. We'll, they'll be adding important gear to hard nodes to allow you to get some gear while farming some character cards. Okay, uh, it depends how much and what they're gonna add and on how many nodes. And then they're also adding more core gear to shipments for shard shop currency. However, it's not happening now, now. It's happening soon. So it's already been a year. They still can't find a way to land those gear changes, right? But they can't, don't you worry. They're gonna get the new mod stuff and the, the new uh, the mod slicing stuff that they, we just saw there. That'll get in there right away. That, they, that they, they can make happen right away. Anyways, some important mod changes. We can just go fast forward inside this PowerPoint here. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that we're getting is they're trying to make mods more accessible to all players. They're going to give us more resources to get from 5A to 6D a lot faster. We already knew this. They're getting rid of three, four dot mods, anything below five, basically, in the mod challenges. So no more wasting Chris just to get some bad mods. You're going to end up throwing away. And this is actually a very minor thing, uh, equalizing the drop rates for all shapes. You may not know, but it's actually triangle mods are actually some of the harder mods to come across here. Now they're making it so it's equal. So you have an equal chance of getting all that. Now we have some other things that are going to be changing. They're adding the 60 to 6A mats to bad on, on mod battle nodes. Right now, they've been primarily exclusive to galactic challenges and, you know, of course, conquest and the such. And then we're also going to be including uh, more resources spread over multiple nodes. And this is also going to include the 5A, the 6E mats here. And then we also got a few more things here. We got the over overhaul of the modding store for better modding experience. Looking at the pricing and the quality of the mods. No more four dot mods in the store, which really overdue. Also adding slice materials into the mod store. So again, now that we're kind of getting access to more things, they're going to make the, the 6A, 6E a bit more accessible. Weekly shipments will also be getting some more shard stuff currency for things like uh, for, for mods. Yeah, weekly shipments will get mod slice materials for things like shard shop currency. And I presume crystals and <laughs> this just cracks me up. It's been a year. It's been a year. We're still having a hard time making it happen. We already saw, uh, talked about this hard node drop rates, shard shop, uh, shop, shard shop currency, core gear, and also they're going to be changing the reward structure for territory battles as well, making the load of middle tiers rake less steep, and then more even rewards for the entire guild here. So, wow, uh, a lot of stuff jam packed in here, and we got one more thing I want to make sure we don't miss out, and that is going to be the mob enforcer rework that we got on top of this here. So Mob Enforcer, garbage of garbage characters. I mean, of course, I don't throw police. I mean, that's a god tier character. Let's not make that comparison here, but this is a really crappy character. You don't even have to wait for an Omicron. They're going to make it usable. How usable? Well, we're going to have to wait and see. Mob Enforcer, part of the Hut Cartel. Dirty fighting, basic ability, deal physical damage to target enemy and inflict defense down for two turns. And if the ally in the leader slot is Hut Cartel and the target already had defense down, you get to inflict days, expose, and vulnerable kind of a good basic ability for a day one trash character here that you're gonna have to gear up for a galactic legend thermal detonator very basic special ability name but deals physical damage to target enemy and detonate all thermal detonators in them kind of like a jawa scavenger and bausch Lee as well then inflict the thermal detonator on the target enemy for two turns mob and force has a 40 percent chance to gain a bonus turn instead of this ability defeats an enemy mob force gains a bonus turn it's pretty crazy, but this actually might be staple to job of the hut because they as well, you didn't hear it, but I summarized for you. Thermal Denners are playing a very core role to the job of the hut team here. So this actually be very uh, a cornerstone component to how job of the hut's going to operate. And then Underworld Moxie at the start of the battle, uh, or at the start of the encounter, a little bit different. Mob Enforcer gains 25% max health for each scoundrel ally, 25% max protection for each bounty hunter ally and 10 speed for each hut cartel ally so the possibility of getting 50 speed and then whenever an ally falls below 30 percent health mob enforcer gains offense up for two turns and the cooldown of thermal detonator is reduced by one so again this is a trash character that you're gonna have to get up and running anyways and now well now you're gonna have a you be usable so really cool a lot of thermal detonator stuff happening here so i'd love to hear your guys thoughts this is a very quick summary of a lot of information out there I, uh, just to kind of rehash my points, I'm really excited to try out this uh, alternate ability 
with the Rancor. I think this is definitely, if this, if it looks like this is the best looking ultimate ability, I think the requirements are great for Jabba. Um, I think there's going to be a catch. Maybe it's not going to be as dominant as some of the other Galactic Legends in Grand Arena. This might be more of a PvE focus type of Galactic Legend. Great thing, Salacious Crummer. I think it's kind of funny. I think this um, cross uh, alignment character battle is going to be banger. Uh, it's going to be difficult. I'm sure we're going to see lots of complaints. That's just how things roll. And I really do hope they stay true to their word where they're going to be able to um, kind of update these territory battles as they go along. And, uh, you know, uh, it's kind of weird. I, I, I want to see the Inquisitors be a little bit better. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I know Reva was a very divisive character for many out there. But just from a gameplay mechanic standpoint, I think Inquisitors for the amount of effort they took and the, the amount of time it took for people to get up and running and how it took pretty much the first half of the year. I'm really hoping that Reva gets a, a bigger role of making these Inquisitors a bit more powerful. You know what? I'm going to laugh. I'm going to laugh if Reva, for some reason, <laughs> replaces the Grand Inquisitor <laughs> as the lead. Mark my words. It's going to happen just like we saw in the Kenobi TV show. I think that'd be hilarious if they went down there. All that effort to get Grand Inquisitor and you got to use Reva. Anyways, a lot of cool stuff, guys. I think we're going to have a lot to chew on for a while here for the remaining part of 2022. Let me know your thoughts. And as always, remember, my brothers and sisters from another fister. Here, we're going to have to work on that outro. It's great to be in the Empire today.